I saw a tweet of yours, and um, I know you mentioned that you know you've had lots of support from you know um, Justin, like you mentioned, you share any resources with you know Tether and had support from Paul. But I don't know you know how much support have you gotten from the wider you know Bitcoin um, ecosystem? I saw in a tweet where you say you just you, uh, that was on the seventeenth of November. You said you were disappointed with some of your peers. And um, you know that probably your what you're launching is might conflict with some of their interests and investments. And um, has this? Would you say the support from the wider ecosystem has been underwhelming? And um, I know you might not want to mention names, but um, what really happened in in that particular you know, scenario? Sure. I mean, that was a particular moment. I would say overall, the support has been pretty great. Um, people have been very positive. Um, I don't know. We went we went from zero followers on our on our company Twitter account to four thousand like one week. Um, I'm I'm happy with that. You know, considering how early we are, it was it was pretty good. Um, we got a lot of great responses, like you know, some coverage in different you know Bitcoin and crypto news websites and some podcasts and things like that. Like overall, I'm I'm happy with the reception. Um, but that specific tweet that you're bringing up, that was a specific moment where there were like two or three people that were kind of, they had an initial like reaction to our announcement and things like this. And I don't know if it was like the threat of competition or things like this, but those few people, and I won't name them, um, I was surprised because there are people that I've known for years and that I've always been able to have like, you know, pretty great discourse with and so I noticed that their discourse in reaction to some of the things we're doing was a little bit emotional, a little bit biased, and I should have expected it, but I didn't. I, I hadn't thought about it beforehand and how that might happen. After it happened, I, I kind of rationalized it and it made sense as to why it happened. But just generally, like, it's like what I said in the tweet, like, when you have your own, like, Bitcoin company or any company, any startup or anything that you, like, basically put your not just your time into but like you know your creativity and your heart into it's basically your baby like this company whether even though i'm not the majority owner of this company it's a tethered company i consider it to be my baby and i'm sure that other people consider their companies to be their baby or specific technology or, or products that they've built within their company to be their baby and you know when you start seeing other people like kind of compete with your baby you know, your first instinct is not to collaborate. It's not to expand your mind. It's to kind of like protect yourself. And so I think that, you know, at least rationally explains some of the behavior. And I think we would all do the same thing in the right situation, in certain situations. It's just a human natural behavior, I think. Um, but I do wish, and I, and I would like for the Bitcoin community to be more open-minded about collaborating. Um, and I have a bias for that as well. Like, the the vision we have and the stuff we're building it requires a lot of adoption like we need like the whole world to adopt slash tags we need all of the bitcoin community to support and adopt you know like tokens on lightning like this is all all of this requires a lot a lot of bootstrapping a lot of adoption you know a lot of like learning technology and things like this and so we need support and so i my philosophy about things has always been like what I learned is people always just say, oh, don't tell people your ideas. Don't share your product ideas. Don't tell, you know, that they're going to steal them. And what I learned is that basically the opposite is true. Like the more you share your ideas and the more unique and the more creative they are, the more likely they actually come true. That's just been my experience. Once in a while, you get people kind of steal a thing here or there or mimic a thing or, or ship a thing before you ship it or whatever. But like the amount of that is so small in comparison to just like actually just sharing everything with everybody that I, I really, really believe in it now. And I'll go so far as like, for example, like I mentioned the block tank product we have earlier, that's like a server product that is going to be something that we monetize. Most people would never open source that kind of thing, but we will open source it. You know, we'll, we'll get a head start on ourselves and, you know, make sure that it all works well and get a few customers into it first. But I, my philosophy is that like, if we open source that, that we might get everybody else that needs that kind of product and, or wants to offer that kind of service contributing to that code and making it better for everybody. And I just really believe that like, we have to have a new way of thinking with Bitcoin because 
Bitcoin kind of like mitigates middlemen. Like we just don't need middlemen as much as we used to. And so being a middleman is just not as useful as a service anymore. And so you have to actually pr provide an actual product or service that people need. And so we might as well get used to open sourcing like public resources and public needs and common software, because I think it'll just be better for it. On Marty Bent's podcast, you mentioned that you are focusing on building, um, you know, like the core products of Synonym and you had a call to action to other developers to kind of build out the rest of your idea. Um, what are the core products that you guys are working on? Sure. So first we'll, we'll have, um, Kind of the thing that's been the most work, which so far at least has been our our wallet. Um, we will have a mobile wallet and a Chrome or you know browser extension version of the mobile wallet as well. Um, and we've been working on that for a while. And that mobile wallet will include Bitcoin, Lightning, tokens on Lightning, and slash tags accounts and slash tags contacts. Um, it also includes a few other little things in there of like how we think, you know, we can improve the user experience for Bitcoin and for Lightning. Um, we kind of rethought the whole user experience for a Lightning wallet and, and by integrating that with the next product, which I'll describe, which is BlockTank. Um, BlockTank is a Lightning service provider. It's basically a server. You can think of it a bit like the Thor service at BitRefill. Um, so basically, we'll also have a web widget that you can use to buy channels, you know, as the public, um, you'll be able to choose like the local capacity, the remote capacity, and how long you want the channel open. And then we'll price that based off of uh, Bitfinex's, you know, lending rate for Bitcoin um, on the Bitfinex exchange. So basically, if you'll be able to like rent liquidity of Bitcoin, you know, inside a lightning channel, it's, it's a very, very reasonable rate. And but we're kind of using that as a, you know, a way to gauge the, the rate of, you know, uh, locking up Bitcoin into a service. Um, BlockTank will also have an, it does have an API. We'll release BlockTank formally within a few weeks, probably. Um, but it'll have an API service so you can integrate the server with any platform. So if you wanted to say, give your users of your own wallet, not, not our wallet, the ability to do the same user experiences as our wallet, you'd be able to do that by integrating with BlockTank API. You'd be able to do it, um, basically offer the same kind of channel configuration, channel management services that we have um, for our own wallet and our own products. You'll be able to do that in your own platforms and in your own apps as well. And so Block Tank is just going to be where we build out, you know, this ability to uh, sell, purchase, you know, uh, automate, manage any type of channel things you need as a service. Um, so we have the wallet, which the, I didn't say the name yet because we're still in, in legal kind of registrations with the name, but we do have a name for it. Um, we have the wallet, so we have the Block Tank LSP. We have slash tags, which is kind of the, the web of trust protocol. It kind of brings everything together and has many, many different use cases that we'll release over the next year. Um, and we'll also integrate that into all our products. And then we have our web platforms, which one of them will be a publishing platform, um, which will basically show how you can use slash tags to actually kill Google and actually, you know, replace existing publishing platforms where you control your content, you monetize your content in many ways. Um, we started to kind of tease some of the ideas with our other product, which is the biz podcast, where they have this crowd wall concept for how you unlock the content. Um, so we, we want to have that kind of thing in our publishing platform, which is why we never open sourced the biz website, because I didn't want people like installing and adopting just this simple podcast, you know, website with one payment feature when we're already trying to build a full fledged content publishing platform. So you could kind of think of it as a mix between like, Google and WordPress and Medium and, you know, any, any podcasting platform. It's just basically going to support every content type you would need and every monetization type you would need. And it's going to incorporate slash tags to be able to make it so you can have apply metadata and ratings and, you know, filtering and sorting for all this stuff. And then the final product we have is uh, it's kind of a two part product, which I won't detail too much because it is kind of a unique design and I don't want to leak it much yet. <laughs> um, and, and it's kind of far away. Um, but we have a uh, basically a decentralized social media, like a Twitter killer kind of thing that we've designed that we're really happy and proud of. Um, but it's going to take a while to build it out. We need to build out some of the features of slash tags first, et cetera. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the whole product stack. 
um, of, the, of the stuff that we're building and shipping. Um, and then just as a side mention, I'll mention like as an underlying technology that we also support, we use this, this protocol called Hypercore. Um, and that is used within slash tags and it will be part of how we build out um, the publishing platform and the centralized social media platform as well. But Hypercore is basically a protocol. It's very similar to uh, BitTorrent except it's got, you know, uh, more cool modernized features, you know, for, for current times. And one of the, one of the more interesting aspects of it is the files that are, are made out of append only logs and append only logs are sort of like databases that um, function a little bit like a blockchain. Like you can't change the past and you can prove it. And so these append only logs are also locked by key pairs and all the content within them is content addressable with key pairs as well. And so it just, you know, I, I won't rant too much, but this basically opens up all of the kind of decentralized storage and Oracle concepts and, you know, abstracted encrypted storage and all these kinds of use cases that people kind of wanted for a while and allows us to kind of do true decentralized social media and, and the other stuff that I've talked about. I got, I got one final question for you, which has kind of come about from what you just, your answer you gave. Um, I mean, first off, I love the ideas, <laughs> which is pretty uh, clear. I think, I think most people are quite into them, especially uh, the Twitter killer. Please, for the love of God, bring, bring <laughs> that to I wish we were done already. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, I can't wait for that product. But um, I guess the question I've got now is, I can see how Block Tank, it, like, there's, there's, there's monetization in there. And obviously, because you guys are creating a company, right? So my question is like, how we on some of the other things like the protocols and the other things you're building like even the decentralized social media how how do you, how are you going to seek to monetize that is like i guess my the thing that came to mind is it all sounds awesome but i'm thinking from a company perspective how are you going to monetize some of these things for the moment the, there's two simple ways like you mentioned block tank um i think that you know when you when, when you consider that for the moment block tank is just doing lightning but we're, there'll be other services that will add on top of it. Like for example, once we have Tether on Lightning, Block Tank will also sell, tel sell Tether channels as well. And so that's another, you know, and, and this plugs into our own apps and it plugs into any other apps. So any wallet that wants to be able to offer Bitcoin and Tether channels to their users will be able to do it through Block Tank as well. Um, and then Block Tank will also, you know, be the storage provider when we, when we map in this hypercore technology to be able to do like basically a decentralized storage market. And so we'll show how you can apply slash tags and have like basically a reputation sort of Oracle system um, for having a decentralized storage market. And you can use that as another basis. And so we'll block tank will participate in that market of like this abstracted kind of encrypted hosting. And so that we have monetization there with block tank with kind of just networking and, and internet, sir, you know, uh, kind of storage and, and, um, and liquidity services. And then also just the very simple thing of in the wallet, we'll, we'll eventually add the feature probably around the summertime. Um, we want to release the wallet in the spring, like April, um, March or April. Um, and then maybe in the summertime, like, you know, a couple a quarter or so later, we'll add the ability to actually just buy Bitcoin and buy Tether and maybe buy you know, bit refill tokens or, or any, you know, any actual token we want to support in block tank and support at Bitfinex, et cetera, that is on lightning. If it's something that falls within our design principles, we'll consider whether to provide liquidity for it. And that liquidity can include liquidity on lightning or just the ability to buy it in the wallet. And so eventually you'll have the capability to, you know, uh, make an account in the wallet KYC if necessary for the amount that you're trying to buy and just sell Bitcoin and Tether to people. Let's do it. That makes a lot more, uh, yeah, it makes it clear to me because I say that was just one question that, you know, came to mind. Um, and I think I, it's okay. Like, like, sorry, but uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Like, I, I didn't mention monetization for like the publishing platform or for the social media platform, because in my opinion, there is no honest way to do it. Like we could do like scammy things, like have like a native token to the to the platform, or you know, uh, you know, take a cut of everything everybody does some weird way. Like, but that none of those things would be natural. We just literally would be injecting ourselves where we don't need to be. And so those things don't have monetization strategies because they're decentralized, open platforms. And so what my, what my philosophy is that. Everybody will be using and paying each other with Bitcoin, with Lightning, and with tokens on Lightning. And everything that I've described to you, our whole stack, is part of an 
an economy. Like you're going to want to monetize and permission everything that you do. And so you're going to need Bitcoin to do it. You're going to need tokens to do it. You're going to need liquidity to do it. And so in order to have the scale of this monetary network, you're still going to need to buy stuff from block tank and, and buy Bitcoins from our wallet and, you know, that kind of thing. I think, yeah, that's, that's reassuring on the social media side and other sides. Cause I think you're right. Like there's so many talent t- opportunities. There's a lot of times where I see something, I think, oh, it's actually quite a cool idea. And then I go on the website and it's got its own token, which immediately you think, oh, happened oh, to me yesterday, man. Like I, I didn't realize, but I had met the guy from Sovereign mm. um, at, at uh, the conference in Atlanta. And apparently we had a nice, you know, cordial conversation but yesterday he got in my got into one of my tweets and was saying like oh maybe we could maybe you guys want to do work with us on doing you know on zero token i'm like what the fuck is zero token (laughs) and like so i i start replying to him like i normally would on twitter like being rude not realizing i've already met the guy and had this conversation but like all i had to do was like glance at what he was showing me and it's like they have a pre-sale they have a native token they're saying they have zero percent loans and i'm like like what the fuck is this like i I don't want any part of this and Mm. so you know yes that guy if he wants to can issue his token on lightning with our technology and whatever but it will never appear in block tank you know it'll never appear in in our wallet as something you can buy from us like it just doesn't meet my design principles i understand that yeah as uh, there's a lot of this there's a lot because there's a lot of push for decentralized social media right with twitter getting strange in the last like week since uh jack sit down it's strange anyway in general before that um and yeah like i saw i was in jordan pearson's uh recent post like some company had commented you know or some decentralized social media thing deso something or other and i went okay this is an interesting idea let's click on the website i think okay all right okay and then you click on i'll oh, buy the token or whatever i thought i'll click on it see where it te- what, what happens you know it takes you to bit clout <laughs> i thought for god's sake <laughs> <laughs> it's just like is this just bit clout wrapped to some sort of yeah. i think they're just trying to wrap their scam in like 50 layers and i thought okay well you know it's pretty disappointing so yeah i i, I trust sometimes it. i'll tell you it's relieving also because <laughs> like while there's nothing quite exactly like slash tags that i found I have found some things that are somewhat similar, like they, they cover some of the use cases we're trying to do. But when I see that they're going to like add a token to it, I'm like, Phew, yeah. good. They're not going to be real competition. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. No, I, I like, like it. I think, I've yeah. seen a glo- and I've seen lots of, you know, social media, decentralized social media. Uh, I'm not sure if they're really decentralized, but I think these ideas have been, you know, coming up, you know, for a while, we've been hearing noises here and there. I think Steemit was one of those who said they were actually decentralized social media for for they actually you know went crashing down. In your opinion, what 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 John? This is for you. What do you think you know is the biggest challenge to creating the decentralized social media? You know, a Twitter killer. What do you think you're actually doing different that you're convinced will succeed? This might sound a little weird, but I think the biggest difference is like we are we were in our design process. We were incorruptible, like. Basically, we weren't willing to say like, and, and we were well researched. So like we, so removing the removing ignorance and removing greed from your design process will free you to actually design useful things. Otherwise, if you inject start injecting greed or you you're, you're too uninformed or ignorant about what you're trying to design, you're going to end up making things that are either corrupted or or poorly designed. And so the difference with, I, th- I hope, you know, obviously we haven't proven anything with our, with our design for, for decentralized social media yet. We could fail as well and we could fail because of ignorance, but it won't be because of corruption and greed right? because that, like, like, like we were just discussing, like if you decide from the beginning that you need a blockchain for everything, all right, so now you're ignorant and probably also greedy because you're just wanting to inject this idea of like making money somehow on a pre-sale or a token or getting rich off of the token because you had early access to it. This is essentially creating the same like cancel on effects of, of fiat. And fiat, you know, the system is obviously very corrupted. It's very corruptible. And so I think that, you know, to do, that's the confidence I have in our design is that we, we chose design restrictions like those design principles on our website and we have more than are on the website as well but you know we we use those as like strict guidelines strict borders of what we could and could not do and i found that when we did that it actually became very freeing and made it made us very creative you know and so it's like once you realize where the edges of your paradigm are you know what you're working with and i really don't think i don't actually think 
there is at the moment with existing technology a more like streamlined or rational way to approach the problem than than the way we're approaching it like for me it all made sense because it made sense as primitives it's not because like you know we, we want people to do what we think is cool or what our friends do or whatever it's because i literally could not find a better way to do it and that's the way i think you should design things like this well, I, I, uh, there's, there's a lot of things I want to ask, but I'm also aware that we're running pretty, pretty long, so we should probably wrap it up. But maybe that means there's a third podcast in the, in the future. <laughs> Who knows? Anytime, um, <laughs> man. Anytime. Always happy to. But yeah, it's been, it's been awesome to, to have you on. And um, I definitely think that my understanding of the uh, synonym and, and, and your plans and intentions is, is a lot clearer. Um, so I think that's good news for me and also for the listeners as well, who will hopefully be, be hearing about that. Um, but yeah, I, I guess just uh, thank you so much for joining, and also thanks uh, you guys for for co-hosting as usual. Uh, is there any kind of final words you want to say? Any kind of um, promotion? Obviously, we said synonym.to is the is the website. I think it's underscore to for Twitter. Synonym underscore to for Twitter. Is there anything else yes. that you want to say? Uh, just generally, like uh, I want everybody to understand that I do appreciate that this uh, this vision and some of these designs and products are we're making a lot of claims we're being very ambitious some of it is overwhelming or confusing or you know asking a lot of people to try to digest i would just say you know just put a little bit of faith in us show us a little bit of support and we'll pay it back like tenfold you know like i just i i really am trying to be as genuine as possible to try to help bitcoin and help bitcoiners and that is my priority above everything um and i think it's our whole team's priority like everybody on our team like kind of feels the same way and has like very similar like principles and things like this and so everything is very principled very rationalized and so i would just say if you encounter something that you think maybe doesn't make sense or you disagree with about what we're doing just try it on and ask questions and, and we'll try to explain it but in the meantime, like also, you know, remember that even though some of this is a bit much, that we are going to take the time to show it to you, like in an app, we're, like everything we're doing, we will demonstrate it. And so it's not going to be only that I'm hoping everybody builds stuff with it and expands their minds and does stuff without us. I, will, I also want them to be reassured that we're literally going to take the time to show you exactly how to do it and exactly what's possible within applications. And we want everybody to adopt it and copy everything we're doing and compete with us as hard as they want to, because I think that's the, the, the path forward. Um, as far as promotional stuff, I would say, you know, the website synonym.to, uh, the Twitter is synonym underscore to, the um, the biz.pro is the website for the podcast. Um, and then, yeah, just keep an eye out for our products. We have block tank, we have slash tags, please. Like if you're a dev or somebody like play with it. Um, we also have the Omni bolt JavaScript library ready for any devs that want to start playing with tokens on lightning early. Um, but that technology is currently being audited. So, you know, come spring, we'll have a lot more stuff to show and a lot more, uh, stuff that you guys can kind of analyze and play with. But until then, you know, any support, any interest, we're recruiting. <laughs> um, we have several job roles open, but also just in general, if you're somebody like that is really interested and you don't see a job role appropriate, but you think you can help somehow, you know, like uh, be creative, you know, tell me what job you think you should have here and contact me, <laughs> you know, like we're, 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 I think we're always only limited by our own creativity. And so I'll leave it at that. I like that final statement. Yeah, I guess you never know. There could be someone who's not even a developer or anything like that, but they could have some genius idea for how they can help the, the vision move forward. So why not, right? Get in touch. Um, well, again, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us, man. Um, it's much appreciated. Always a pleasure. Um, and thank you to everyone for listening as well. Um, we've uh, appreciated all of you, each and every one of you. So everyone have a lovely day, week, afternoon, year, month, whatever. Uh, whenever you're listening uh, and take care and keep on buying Bitcoin. Mm -hmm.